my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome again to our Wednesday Bible study. We pray that these lessons have been encouraging, uplifting, and edifying in your efforts to grow in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. The last couple of lessons, we've been examining the flood, and we've looked at how God called Noah and told him what he wanted him to do, gave him instructions, and now we're here at the time of the actual flood. Genesis chapter seven, uh, starting at verse number 10. And it came to pass after seven days that the water of the flood were upon the earth. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened and the rain was upon the earth 40 days and 40 nights in the self same day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the son of Noah, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. They and every beast after his kind and all the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and every fowl after his kind, every bird of every sort. And they went in unto Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. And the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. And the ark went upon the face of the waters, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered and of all flesh and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl and of cattle and of beasts and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth and every man. All in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. And every living substance was destroyed, which was upon the face of the earth, both man and cattle and the creeping things and the fowl of the heaven. And they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained alive and they that were with him in the ark. And the waters prevailed upon the earth a hundred and fifty days. All right. So God promised that the flood would begin after seven days, Noah's faith is being further tested as he is required to wait another week for the Lord, for the flood. He's already waited 120 years while building the ark. And no doubt he had to endure a great amount of ridicule by those he preached to about the rain coming. Again, Noah preached for 120 years that God was going to destroy the earth and only eight souls were saved. They did not understand or they did not believe that God was going to destroy the earth and rain. They didn't understand what rain was. And so Noah sounded foolish. Noah sounded like he was not, he didn't know what he was talking about. So they did not obey until now it had not rained on the earth. But God watered the earth from a mist, Genesis chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. So up to this point, 
the inhabitants of the earth had no doubt never seen rain. Now the rain began and the fountains of the deep break forth. So they got water coming down from the sky and up from the sea. Everyone goes into the ark, Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, and the animals. Now, it had been noted that if God did not destroy all remaining animals to keep the population manageable, they would have overrun the earth and man would be in constant danger. So, so God is looking ahead and saying, if I don't destroy the animals, when Noah gets off the ark, there'll be too many animals for just eight people in the land. So in his wisdom, he says, I'll just make two of each one. Let them reproduce as man reproduces and we'll keep the balance intact. Here's some, some important notes for us to remember thus far. Number one, the wickedness of man was in all the earth. Their actions displeased God to the point that he decided to destroy them and start all over. Genesis 6 and 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. We cannot know how much sin displeases God. We can only imagine. God saw the wickedness of man in the earth, and it seems as if everything he thought of was evil. Next point. Amidst all this evil, Noah found grace in God's sight. Genesis chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. I would love for that to be able to be said by me, about me, by the Heavenly Father, that I walked with God. When we look at our world today, we see all manner of wickedness, evil, greed, and debauchery, but that does not allow us to be like them. It is still possible to live godly in this present world. And we need to remember, we are not called on to be like them. We're trying to encourage them to be like us. Next point, God told Noah to build an ark and gave him specific instructions as to the size, the material, the levels in the ark, how to pitch it inside and out, and to bring food for himself, his family, and the animals. Where God is specific, we too must be specific. There's no evidence that Noah questioned God or changed his command. Genesis 6.22 tells us Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if God could look down on his people and see that we're doing everything just as he commanded. Another note, for 120 years, Noah preached to call the people to repentance. The wickedness of man moved God to destroy all mankind, but Noah found grace in the sight of God. Even though we've heard the verdict, the righteousness of God allowed mankind time to repent. Listen what Peter says in 1 Peter 3.20, which were sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is eight souls, were saved by water. Again, Peter speaks in 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We see the mercy of God in allowing time for mankind to repent. 
Next point we want to remember that God moved the animals to come to Noah, but mankind's free will would not move him to come to Noah and be saved in the ark. It's a sad commentary that the animals would come, but mankind would not. And again, I, I, I like to comically think of a herd of cattle in the field and then two of them just start walking away. And the other cattle's like, where y'all going? So don't worry about it. God called us. Well, can I go with y'all? No, he only wants us to. But mankind would not obey God. Next point we want to remember, two of each unclean animal and seven pairs of clean animals were taken into the ark. This shows that the distinction of clean and unclean animals was already established among God's people before the law was given to Moses. It didn't just start on Mount Sinai. God already had a distinction of clean and unclean animals. Once more, we recognize how God prepared for the salvation of mankind. Know this, trouble may surprise us, but it can't surprise God. For Peter said that he has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. It's very clear that God is preparing ahead for his people to sacrifice clean animals up to him. Next point, I want you to marvel with me at the faith of Noah, who prepared for something he had never seen or heard of before. His obedience to God brought him through the destruction of all breathing things. Remember COVID? That too was something unheard of, but God brought us through. We've got to recognize God sees the future. He knows what's coming and in his graciousness and in his righteousness and in his mercifulness, he provides for us for things we have not seen or not even heard of. Another point I want to point bring out, there are theories advanced by scientists that this was only a partial flood that did not cover the entire earth. But let's see what the Bible says about that. Chap Genesis chapter seven, verses 17 through 20. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth and the waters increased and bear up the ark and it was lifted up above the earth and the waters prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth and the ark went upon the face of the waters and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth and all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Listen to what the Bible said. All the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. If the high hills were covered, you know the valleys were covered. Verse 20, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail and the mountains were covered. The Bible says that all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. So if you want to believe that man says it's only did part of the world, then you fail to believe what the Bible says. Genesis chapter seven, verse 16. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh as God had commanded him and the Lord shut him in. When the Lord shut them in, the fate of those outside was permanently sealed. As we look back and see those who had salvation in reach, how sorrowful they must have been to realize it's too late. Song says, God's got the key and you can't get in. God shut them in. Imagine Noah and his family having to hear the cries of destruction right outside their door. I wonder, did anybody try to climb on top of the ark to get to Noah and ask him to let them in. I wonder, did he hear the animals making their noises as the waters rushed in and drove them away? I wonder, did he hear the commotion 
of those dying outside. Genesis chapter eight, starting at verse one. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated and the ark rested on the seventh month on the 17th day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. The Bible says God remembered Noah and the inhabitants of the ark. Now that doesn't mean that God ever forgot them but the following actions showed that he had not abandoned them. He stopped the rain, closed off the fountains of the deep and made a wind blow across the earth to dry up the waters. Remember when Moses and the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, the Bible said God parted the waters with an east wind. Now the text tells us that the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat on the 17th day of the seventh month. They went in on the 17th day of the second month in the 600 year of Noah's life, Genesis chapter seven, verse 11. After five months on the ark, the resting on the mountains was the first sign that the flooding is over. Think about that. The waters were retreating, but Noah didn't know it until the ark rested on the mountain. I need you to help me praise him for doing things for us that we don't even recognize that he's doing until it's all done. What is God working out for us right now that we don't even see? We've been there before. We've seen God come up with something later down the line that we did not see coming. The ark has landed, but it's not until the 10th month, three months later, that the tops of the mountains are seen. What do you think their faith was like after 10 months that they've been in the ark? As the Lord carries us through trials and testing, our, our faith should grow every passing day. When you see that you are making it despite your pain, when you see that you are still holding on, when Satan tries to make you quit, your faith should continue to grow. Because as the song said, I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I can imagine that Noah's faith in God was growing with every event. Hopefully, you can see why Noah is listed among the faithful in Hebrews chapter 11. He was found righteous in the sight of God before the flood. And he continued to show unparalleled faith throughout the process leading up to the flood and during the flood. If you show God your faith before the flood or before the the fiery furnace or before the lion's den or before you meet your giants. He is faithful as he promised and he will never leave you nor forsake you. I beg you, show God your faith before the flood comes. Show God your faith before you're getting thrown into the furnace. Show God your faith before the lion's den. Show God your faith before you show down with Goliath. And God will protect you and carry you through. I hope that you've learned something new about the flood. Some insights that perhaps you may not have focused on. 
Notice some things that the Bible has always said, but we just never noticed. That is the purpose of our Bible study, to learn more about what the Bible is teaching. I thank you so much for tuning in. Again, we request that you like us on Facebook, subscribe to our channel, spread these messages among your friends and acquaintances, and help us to grow this ministry. Let folk know you can learn a bit more about what the Bible says and what the Bible means. Until next week, we thank you for tuning in, and we pray as always, you be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. It's in my hands, my feet, I'm talking about what he's done for me. I get joy just thinking about what he's done for me. I get joy, joy thinking about what he's done for me.